concert hall as they were doing their killing were uh, shouting, we're killing you because you killed our confrère in uh, Syria and, uh, and Iraq, right? The French had uh, joined in on the, uh, on the bombing. So I think this is now more a form of irregular warfare between states. It's state-sponsored terrorism, and there will be obviously every attempt will be made to you know to obfuscate and and to and to hide what's going on. But fundamentally, we're back to terrorism as irregular warfare, Kitsonian maybe, but irregular warfare of one state or pseudo state, the ISIS uh, or Islamic State, Daesh, ISIL, Caliphate, and so forth, against a well-established nation state, i.e., France. Now. Let's look for a second about the, um, the media hype. Now, we have to re recall always, this term sophisticated was applied to ISIS from the very beginning, from the get-go, back in the summer of last year, 2014. We were told, oh, they're so sophisticated. Their use of the social media is so overwhelmingly sophisticated. Hmm. Uh, and that uh, that that epithet looks like that had gotten into the Associated Press style book that whenever you said ISIS, you had to say uh, sophisticated. It's like if you say Amy Schumer, you have to say amazing when there's nothing amazing. In this case, uh, ISIS sophisticated when they're not sophisticated, um, not not in any in any uh, you know fundamental way, and especially not now, not with this. So. Um, what I found very interesting was the same epithet that had always been applied to ISIS was now applied to these shooters and killers in Paris. They were all of a sudden sophisticated. Now, I don't – you have to pardon me. Maybe I'm old-fashioned. But I don't see the sophistication. I think it's very crude, very primitive, very improvised. It's a series – of blind terrorist attacks, right? You can't tell who you're killing. You just kill whoever is there. Blind terrorist attacks on soft targets, no high-value targets, right? No Eiffel Tower, no Arc de Triomphe, no, no nothing, right? No cube, no pyramid at the Louvre, nothing like that. No uh, World Trade Center, no Pentagon, no... No uh, Madrid uh, trains, right? None of this stuff. No, uh, what was that? Uh, that square with, near Tavistock where the 7-7 the, uh, seven, seven stuff went off in, in Great Britain in 2005. They, they can't do any of that. Here's what they do. They send three uh, psychotic patsies to the stadium, right? The Stade de France in northern Paris. Uh, and they've all got suicide vests, and I guess they've, some of them have got Kalashnikovs, right? Now, it, it's, it seems to be the case that they used a very unstable kind of chemical, which, which may have caused some surprises. I don't, I don't know if there's any real finding about that. And, of course, with all this stuff, you got to take everything cum grano salis. Man, oh, man, you've got to be skeptical. So you know, a lot of this stuff I advance with uh, many caveats, right, practically with trepidation. You just can't believe it. But the attack on the uh, on the stadium is a complete failure. There's a stadium with, what, 70,000 people in it, a huge stadium. And if you were going to kill people, man, that's where you had to be. And you had the president of France in there. And you had the foreign minister of Germany, Steinmeier, was there. And, uh, the, you know, all kinds of TV was trained on that. They couldn't get in. These psychotic patsies from the Saint-Denis cell, I guess, tried to, they said, how are we going to get in? Uh, they found that they didn't have tickets. Well, that's not very smart, is it? You better get your tickets in advance. Otherwise, you better, you know, wait. But they said, we can't wait because we're collapsing. So they got to go in. And they said, well, what we'll do is we'll uh, wait until the largest uh, number of people are entering, right? The, the, you know, the rush hour of people going to the game. And We'll mingle in there and we'll try to rush through and then we'll be able to detonate and have a lot of victims, except they got there too late. So they didn't buy the tickets and then they got there too late. This is pathetic. This is the gang that couldn't shoot straight. They're not sophisticated. And then I'm afraid most of the rest of it 
is simply a, a glorified drive-by shooting. It's vehicles with people with, with Kalashnikovs in the vehicles, and they're shooting out of the windows of these cars, right? We know the Seat, S-E-A-T, I think, the Volkswagen Polo, both black and maybe a third car. So they go on a shooting spree as a drive-by drive -by shootings um, in, in the streets of, uh, of Paris. Um, and they met, you know, they kill significant number of people. They focus on these outdoor cafes, the terraces, right? They, they stop and they shoot at cafes on two sides of the street. It's only when they get to the concert hall that they finally manage to kill a significant number of people. And it's, it's, it's more than half of the entire death toll is in the, is in the concert hall. So I don't see any particular sophistication and, and the idea that they all start at once, I guess, but that's that's very minimal. There's there's no particular technical aspect. The attack on the stadium is a complete failure. They don't kill anybody inside the stadium. They're only able to kill themselves. What kind of a, of a suicide bomber can be uh, happy if there's no death toll other than this than the suicide bomber himself or herself? Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome to the second half of our edition of World Crisis Radio. It's the 20th of November here in the afternoon in Washington, D.C., and we are talking about uh, the Paris uh, terrorist attacks of just about exactly one week ago, almost to the hour, and what this means about the dynamics of terrorism and also about the, the entire international scene. Now, our principal point in the last segment was anytime you hear a media hound, uh, a prostitute, telling you that this was a sophisticated action, that person is unfortunately either a dupe or an agent of some intelligence agency that has a vested interest in, uh, in, in purveying fear. And remember, this question of purveying fear is so institutionalized now. It is so much the automatic Pavlovian knee-jerk response of these um, press people, the reporters and so forth, that um, you have to realize that this, they're going to respond to these events unless and until they get very strict orders to change their tone. This is, this is how they're going to they're gonna play it. So it's very crude. And the fact, I regard the fact that they were calling ISIS sophisticated and still do, and they call these 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 primitive and uh, really poorly organized shooters and bombers right, who fail one, one leg of their attack is a complete failure, the most important one, with the biggest pool of possible victims. They just don't get anywhere near any, any target. Um, if you call that sophisticated, there's something wrong with you. Now, there were a few people on France 24 this week who you know, rebelled against this notion of how sophisticated. Now, here's another uh, aspect. Right? The French police, unfortunately, are rather dirty. They are factionalized and uh, at the leadership level in particular. Um, here's what they have managed to do. Uh, this character, Abaoud, who was killed in the siege of the apartment in Saint-Denis, right? Saint-Denis, a little bit north of Paris, that famous basilica, right? The first really high Gothic church, right, by Abbé Suger, S-U-G-E-R, the guy who built it, the uh, tremendous importance of the role of light, right? La lumière inside this, uh, this building, well, in San Denis now, this is a you know sort of a, a rundown working class uh, suburb of Paris. So this uh, Aboud was apparently killed, or they now say he was killed, in that firefight, which I believe was from uh, what Tuesday morning into into Wednesday. So um, he was the one who knew relatively the most, right? He apparently he had been. This is the story they tell. He had been traveling to Syria. And then he came back, and the French police knew about him. He was very much among the usual suspects, but they somehow uh, didn't prevent him from going to Syria. And then they lost track of him when he was in Syria, and then uh, when he came back, they didn't know. And he had been there for a while, 
and then uh, he's regarded as the organizer or mastermind. Now, I, I would say the the mastermind is probably back in some place like Raqqa or something like this. But um, why did the French police have to kill this guy above all? Because this is this is now suspicious. We have discovered a pattern. If we go back to the case of Mohammed Mera, M-E-R-A-H, you'll remember that Mera was the guy who went on a uh, shooting spree in, uh, I think, March of 2012. It's very suspicious timing. Just as the French presidential election campaign got underway, as I recall, uh, Sarkozy was unpopular. He needed an event like this. Mera delivered. He killed some French military uh, people, right? some soldiers out on leave. And Mera then also attacked a Jewish school. So that entire infamy was attached uh, to him. Uh, he gave some interviews. Uh, eventually, he was holed up in a house. He was still giving interviews. And at a certain point, the place was stormed and he was killed. So the impression we're getting is that the policy of the French police is to kill important witnesses. So you never get the vital testimony. Marat, of course, was somebody who had been exposed as an official informant, practically uh, a stringer of the DGSE, the intelligence agency. And um, we want to remember the name of a certain Claude Guéant, G-U-E, accent aigu, A-N-T, Claude Guéant. Uh, we'll talk about him, but that, that guy has just been uh, sentenced to uh, sus uh, jail time, although suspended and a, and a rather large fine for embezzling money. But this is this – these entrenched bureaucrats, right, entrenched French several, several civil service bureaucrats, right, many graduating from the École Nationale de l'Administration, the Grande École of uh, Enarc, right, the, the – um, the bureaucrats, right? The grand commis d'état. Um, so it, it turned out that that Mohammed Mera, who had killed the French soldiers and attacked the uh, Jewish school and killed lots of people, was in fact officially a stringer, right? Uh, Semi-official, whatever, uh, of the French intelligence service DGSE, and that they had sent him all around the Middle East to build up his credibility and to do other tasks, I'm sure. But then he was killed. Uh, and then uh, in the Charlie Hebdo, we find that the principal patsies there, and that is the Kouachi brothers and uh, Koulibaly, uh, that group of three, as soon as the entire thing began to wind down, they were all killed. So the French police are zero for three in stopping these terrorist attacks, but they're they're batting a thousand. They're three for three in making sure that the witnesses, the principal witnesses, get killed. Um, so that is very suspicious, uh, and we're we're wondering about you know what's what's going on with this stuff. There's also the story of this woman. This woman, uh, if, if, if these biographical details are, are accurate, right, the woman who was apparently, she blew herself up, according to the initial reports, even until tomorrow, until yesterday, they were, uh, they were uh, reporting that this woman uh, had blown herself up with a suicide vest in the Saint-Denis apartment. Uh, we have pictures of her in suggestive poses, Right? She doesn't wear a veil. She doesn't wear much of anything. She's vivacious. She's flirtatious. Um, she's a kind of a you know a femme fatale, uh, I guess. Uh, and then she she supposedly blows herself up. But now they say no, none of that is true. This reminds me of Atta, right? You remember Mohammed Atta, who supposedly piloted the first plane that hit the North Tower. Uh, he was known to consort with prostitutes. He was known to take drugs. He went to the discotheque, drank alcohol. Uh, complete hedonistic, uh, westernized, decadent existence. This woman, according to some reports, had been herself a prostitute uh, or a rapper yet. So she was definitely deeply compromised with the rotten, uh, decadent culture of the West. But now then she supposedly turns into somebody so 
uh, so fanatical that she's willing to blow herself up. There's some stuff that 